Hi, my name's Graham Parker, and this is the Lens Sharpness Test with the Blackmagic 4K production camera. I printed this chart off myself, so it's obviously not as good as a professional chart, but it seemed okay for this quick test. Generally, the center was pretty good across all lenses, so we'll focus on a corner instead. These images haven't been corrected or graded. Apologies about the difference in white balance, but I was short on time. Because they haven't been graded, this test also gives you a bit of an idea what the various distortions on the lenses are like. For a reference, here's a resized photo of the chart taken with my 5D Mark II. As you'd expect, with the two times extended 2 on it, the quality suffers. It's not quite as bad when stopped down to f8, but once you see it at 200mm without the extender again, you quickly realise just how hugely it impacts the image quality. I believe the third version of the extender has improved things a little, but it still should be a last resort when you just can't get the shot otherwise. By the way, all shots except for that one just now were taken at f5.6 as we try to coax the best out of each lens. Dropping down to 70mm on the 70 to 200 shows that 200mm is much clearer than 70mm. Between 70 and 200, there's impressively little distortion. 70mm on the 24 to 70, however, is clearer, and 24mm is even clearer again. The 17 to 40 shows that 4K, despite only being 8 megapixels, demands good glass. Distortion isn't too bad at 40mm, but it's very obvious at 17mm, and the worst in our test so far. Resolution-wise, it's just not that sharp at either end of the lens. Across the image, it's not terrible at the centre, but it's not great either, and it degrades as you look to the corners. The Tokina 11-16 to takes distortion further, and that's to be expected on an ultra-wide-angle zoom. The resolution, again, isn't really good enough for 4K, but the overall wide-angle look, helped by the smaller 1.7x crop factor on the 4K camera, will create some eye-catching footage nevertheless. It's sharper at the 16mm end, but about even in the centre. To go to the Zeiss 21mm after the Tokina is like seeing HDTV over standard def. The corners in particular are as different as could be in sharpness and chromatic aberration, but given the massive price difference, you'd expect so. The Samyang 14mm however shows up the Tokina for a similar price delivering much sharper corners and hugely reduced chromatic aberration. It's certainly no Zeiss, but it would be a great budget choice for a wide angle. Then there's the Zeiss contacts range, with 85mm, 50mm and 35mm f1.4 MMJ EF lenses. These are the type of old lenses where when you discover them, you feel like you've come across a bit of a secret. The 35mm isn't what anyone would call cheap, but compared to the modern Zeiss price, it certainly is. And the 50 and 85 are steals. Distortion is incredibly low, typical of a good prime. Chromatic aberration is very well controlled and it's sharp right to the corners. The same goes for 50mm and the 35mm. I wouldn't say the 35mm is sharper than the others, but its popular focal length seems to command the high price. I can tell you it's painful on the eyes to look at this ice context and then look at the Tokina. The focal lengths aren't even remotely close, it's not a fair fight, but again it shows that the 4K sensor you bought is depending on you for good lenses. So there you have it, a sharpness test with various lenses on the Blackmagic 4K production camera. Just before you rush off to eBay though, I'll also be doing a couple of tests on ND filters and IR filters in the next few weeks. You might be surprised just how much of a difference to your colour these make. So subscribe today, and I look forward to bringing you more Blackmagic videos.